Meg and Dr. Rowe, what a what a wonderful lead up to us. I, I almost don't have anything to say. I mean, uh, that was, <laughs> that was, was phenomenal. Um, uh, I, I'm privileged and proud to be part of this call to action. Uh, uh, before I, I, I go forward, I, I would like to suggest that our viewers, uh, if they have an opportunity, um, well, if they don't make an opportunity, go on to solveme.org and and uh, look at the white paper that we have there for more information. Uh, part of that white paper, uh, one of the most stunning pieces of information there is that there are 7 million people uh, uh, as of January who are suffering from a disabling version of long COVID. Uh, that's a stunning number. Uh, it's about 2% of the population. Uh, and uh, we need to pay attention to this and shame on us as a society uh, that for 30 some odd years, Megan has had to go through this hell that she's gone through with uh, virtually the entire medical community uh, not paying attention to this disorder. Uh, comedians, you'll find them still on YouTube making fun of chronic fatigue syndrome as being an, un an, an unreal, a non-real uh, disorder. Uh, and doctors doing the same. Uh, uh, this has been a frustrating, terrifying, and agonizing 20 years uh, with my son, Trevor. Uh, having a child with a disability, any disability, is difficult. Uh, but a disability caused by a disease that doctors know little about, can't fully treat or cure, and that many don't even recognize as a real illness, uh, presents its own unique challenges. Uh, lots of false promises and false hopes have uh, entered our lives uh, these past 20 years. Um, a positive about this journey is that I couldn't be prouder of my son and the courage he has demonstrated, but particularly his unrelenting spirit of appreciating whatever positives life has to offer. Um, Trevor blocks out uh, many memories of his journey, and I'm, uh, we've discussed this before uh, this presentation, uh, uh, both due to his brain fog and the pain that these memories cause. Uh, he's often said that in this respect, his, his brain fog is a gift. He subconsciously forgets what he's missed out on throughout his life and what he has, ex uh, and, uh, what he has experienced all these years. So Trevor has uh, asked me to help him cover today as much as he can in five or 10 minutes. Um, and uh, let's just uh, uh, start right off with the basic question, Trev. Apparently you and Megan are, our, our kindred spirits, you, you seem to have had the same, the same start to uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. It's, it's really, it's really true, Dad. Um, uh, just starting for me, I was a normal kid. I was a normal kid until I was about 10 years old. I was, I was even, I was extroverted. I was active. I played baseball. I was on the all-star team. I pitched. I, I was even president of my class. I, I was just, I was full of life. I was, I was in the gifted program. I was, everything was sorted for me until I got mono in the end of that fifth grade year. And uh, I missed a month of school, which is really odd, but because nothing had ever gone wrong like that in my life. And I, I thought I would just bounce back because you always think you bounce back as a kid, you're invincible. I had a normal ish summer. And then in October of that year, I went on a bike ride with my dad and going up a hill, I felt my heart just pounding in my head and my vision narrowing a black tunnel. And I woke up on the ground and uh, my dad said I had a look like I had a seizure or something. We went to the hospital because I couldn't shake the dizziness. And they tried to give me fluids. They tried. To, they had no idea. I tested. Everything was normal, but I couldn't walk. I was so tired. I had constant headaches. There was something wrong with my gut. I couldn't eat foods I could. I could usually eat. I couldn't eat dairy. All of a sudden, I couldn't eat. I was bloated. I. I was. I was just. And most importantly, I could not think straight. I spent all of middle school in a wheelchair or in bed. I would crawl around as a, as a preteen to go from place to place in the house, sometimes even being carried. I was that weak. 
and I had no explanation for it. I had so, I had so little explanation for it, and yet my parents, my, my, I can never express enough thanks for, were in the medical field and completely believed me because there were doctors. There, there were doctors who gaslit me. There was one doctor who gave me a a UTI medication that turns your urine orange and told me if it turns your urine orange, you'll be cured. Thought it was completely in my head. I took it, of course, nothing happened. This kind of thing is the, 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 the hubris of the medical community that everyone who's had this for a long time has experienced. There's, there's no recognition of how invisible this can be. And the, something Megan mentioned that I really appreciate is the waxing and waning of it is that I had those terrible years in middle school. I got well enough to experience high school. I was sick a lot, but I experienced high school. And then, of course, I got sick again because that's just the way this disease works. It comes and it goes. And, and sometimes doctors would give me a new medication and they give, and this has continuously happened for 20 years. They give me a new medication and it helps for a few months or sometimes just a few weeks. And then my body finds a new way to just be completely exhausted again. Um, I've, the, the number of diagnoses that I've had, I, 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 ME-CFS, uh, chronic Lyme disease, postural orthostatic tachycardia, central sleep apnea, narcolepsy, mold poisoning. They've called it so many different things. I, I think dysautonomia covers it well but it, it, my body fundamentally doesn't regulate itself the way that it's supposed to. Um, Trevor, how did, it, how did it affect your social life and growing up as a young child? That, yeah, that, that's the one that hurts. I managed to not say that. I, so I had a lot of friends in fifth grade. And in sixth grade, when I was missing, uh, the school uh, put together a poster like they would for a kid who has cancer in the hospital and everyone signed it. And some people sent pictures and it was trying to be my friend and trying to, trying to reach out and, you know, get better soon, get well soon, that, that, that pithy thing. And, and it was sweet. And I still have that poster, but I, uh, when I went back to school, I wasn't allowed to sit back at the same table. So I was the weird kid who was never there. And uh, that hurt. And that changed my life. I was the outcast. I went from being, I won a popularity contest in the fifth grade. I never would have, I'll never win one again. Like I completely recoursed my relationship to other people. And, and as, I, as unfathomable as it is, spending time imprisoned in your house, interacting with no peers for months and months on end, sometimes not going outside for weeks as a child, it, your social skills take a hit. I felt autistic. I am not. But when I would interact with people, I would talk too much. I would over-engage. I would overcompensate, And I'd be on various stimulants to function. So it would make it worse. It was the most embarrassing it was the most humiliating, embarrassing process. And on top of all that, being growing up and becoming a man, the last thing you want to do is show weakness. The last thing you want to do when you meet new people is say, I'm really tired and unreliable. It makes dating difficult. It makes meeting new people difficult. It makes showing up for anything. You, they know that they'll invite, you know, you're making a new friend. The number one thing you have to be is consistent. And that is the last thing that you can be when you have chronic fatigue, when you have ME. Uh, How would it change things for you if long COVID or ME, CFS was a recognized disease like the cancer is? It would be unbelievable. It, it, it would, it would. I would feel comfortable saying it. It's only in after 20 years, only in the last two years have I been public about even having it. I've hit it. it I, I was afraid to invite even friends I've had for years to this talk because I knew that their understanding of it wasn't as deep as I was going to go right now, that their understanding of it is not is not complete. If I were able to say that I had cancer, I know that people would be there because they know what it is because it has a public face. 
we need to be that public face. And that's, that's why I'm really glad to get to share my story here today. Yeah, we call this disease the invisible disease. Of course, patients feel invisible. Um, when they walk into a doctor's office, they feel invisible. When they're with their friends, they feel invisible. And they're embarrassed to even tell people what they have and they try and hide it or just don't show up. Is that right, Trev? Yeah, yeah, it's... it's... How, did, how did it affect your academic life going forward and, and your dreams? It made, it made graduating take years longer than it should have. It made uh, my aspirations as a musician impossible. Um, Why? Why? It, you got to be there. You got to show up. You got to be on your feet. You got you to gotta travel. You got to tour. You got to you have to be consistent and I will only feel well at intervals. And uh, the way I used to do it is I would just plan a show at short notice when I knew I was feeling well enough to do one show. I haven't done a show in five years, but I, uh, that was what I wanted to be. That was what I went to college for originally. And I wanted to be a musician and uh, it uh, it's a dream killer. And I think that that graph that Dr. Rowe showed of, the quality of life is the most important the most important chart is that we have it harder than well recognized diseases in terms of how much life we can actually experience what we can build what we can build with our lives i'll never forget uh, about two months ago trevor you you, you had a, an unbelievable as you said earlier it, it waxes and wanes you have good days and bad days you had a good six week run. And sometimes the disease, MECFS or long COVID, it, it goes away by itself. You know, not everybody gets it forever, but many people do. And, and you were excited that it was, it was gone. You, you had this, remember the movie Awakenings, that, 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 an awakenings moment. And um, we were sitting in the park. We went walking for four miles, which was unprecedented. We did it the following day, another four miles. We went out to eat. We didn't have any stomach issues. We went shopping. We did, we, and we, we talked about, we talked about the childhood that we both lost out on. And we cried and we started to dream again about what you were going to do with your life going forward. And it came back, right, Trev? That's right. It came back. And I'm in a, I'm in a harder time now. Uh, again and and I, I i'm still pushing myself to get outside and 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 do what i can still do but uh yeah there's an immense immense loss and uh, the big way that i've coped with it in a big way that i'm usually able to do these talks is that uh i dissociate is that i i don't identify with myself as a way of protecting myself and that's something that kids are doing they become they will become, there's no way you can do it without it. They become numb. You become numb to the fact that you're not living your life. You're a shell. You're an absolute shell of yourself. And the hardest part of it is the waxing and waning is that you get the hope and you lose it. You get it taken away. I compare it to flowers for Algernon. It's just this, this ride, this ride into the, the beautiful visceral nuanced reality that that is life and then having it ripped away i think we can we can end on that note yeah i think so too thank you so much um another question that we wanted that we talked about as we were planning for this call is um what is the one key takeaway and i'd love each of the panelists to answer this what is the one key takeaway that you would highlight that's the biggest difference between these post-infection illnesses in adults as opposed to children and what sort of you could do for the pediatric population or the young adult population, what would be that one takeaway? Um, Trevor, I'm going to pick on you first, if you don't mind. Um, if, what would you like to, to share with folks about that difference between um, doing this journey as an adult versus doing this journey as a, as a child? Well, when you, when you do it as a kid, you have no idea what life's even supposed to be. You hear people describing long COVID as, oh, I, I can no longer 
run marathons. I can no longer, you know, uh, keep up with, I don't know, my wife on vacation or something, you know, things like that. It's or not your just job. That. Or, or your and, job. Of course, yeah. your job or your, you know, or your social life that you've built over your life over time, cumulatively. But if you start your life, and you don't know what life is supposed to be. It just the foundation is destroyed. So it's it, that's that's the difference. A and of course, you're you're a little guy. So who you hopefully someone believes Chicken Little. You know, is you're saying you're saying oh, oh you don't want to go to school. Yeah, I don't want to. I'm not out of getting out of bed, mom. <laughs> like so. Yeah, I think that's 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 the takeaway. Is it's it's completely different. Even though it happens less often, it's far more devastating to a life. Stuart, as a father, what, what did that, um, that journey, what was that biggest difference for you as an adult looking at your son going through this journey? Frankly, you know, uh, back when Trevor started having it, it was worse than now. We have this pandemic that has brought attention to, to the disease and you can actually find doctors, wonderful doctors like Dr. Rowe who, who know about it. Um, and uh, back then, uh, we were just being told we don't know what's wrong. And so we just cried. We thought he was dying. Um, so it's this, 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 be, and I, I want to also mention that we have fortunately resources to pay out of, out of pocket, you know, when insurance doesn't cover things, this disease hits everybody, it hits minorities who don't have the resources. I, I, I just don't, I just don't know how people can deal with this disease, needing income, uh, uh, needing medical care and not having uh, independent resources, because the, the system isn't set up for this. So we have about five minutes left, and I'd like to touch on um, the the very last uh, question that we had prepared was um, really about the intangible um, yeah, impacts on young people fighting long COVID and other post-infection illnesses. Trevor really shared about what that did with his journey, but I'd like to, to, to have each of you share a little bit about what we collectively can do as loved ones, as, as members of a society, as medical care providers, what is um, one piece of advice you'd have for, for uh, the rest of the world dealing with long COVID or looking at long COVID to help the people who are experiencing this and to help young people on their journey? What's one piece of advice that you, or maybe one experience you'd like to share that um, was a positive that really helped and we can hopefully get the message out to, to share that positivity? To, to kids? To kids, it, 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 it's, it's okay not to be okay. That, that's, that's what I, I then that got, that, that got me. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing is you have to not suck it up. Like what Megan said about the American, the American personality, the Protestant work ethic, that, that whole thing is like, you know, bootstrap it and all that stuff. Just not apply to everyone. And it's okay to be a part of something, to contribute what you can, to do kinds of work that don't necessarily have due dates, they're just assignment based. And, and you know, this the asymmetrical learning, you know, you, you, can, you can learn over different periods of time. You can take more years to achieve things other people achieve. Life doesn't happen on a time, on the same timeline for everyone. And that's okay. It just it's that's that's that self-love is very hard to learn but if it's instilled early they won't feel this guilt and shame of not arriving on time you'll get the final word of um, any any final thoughts you'd like to share mm -hmm. to other parents out there um that are that are struggling with this journey or other families that um, are looking to support children in their lives so you know there are a number of organizations like make and, and, and solve me.org that are doing some great things. Um, if you can, donate. Uh, we need to get research out there. Um, and we are getting research out there. And that takes money. And uh, also our advocacy work at, at, in, in Washington has been very productive. Uh, uh, we, as, a, as an organization uh, and affiliated with others, we were successful in getting $1.15 billion awarded to the NIH for, for research, which they are distributing slowly, but gradually. Um, that's not the only way to get this done. We need a lot more money and it's not just gonna come from government. Um, as an employer, if you're an employer, I recommend you be sensitive to the fact that you have employees, if you have enough of them, if you have several dozen, I'm sure you have employees who have MECFS or long COVID and they're hiding it from you and they're trying to get by day to day. Maybe you want to try and, you know, get them out of the woods there. 
and uh, um, reach out to, to, to your employees and ask your employees, does anybody have this problem? We want to work with you and work with them. See if you can, you can make them take some of their suffering away, trying to hide what they, what they have. If you have friends who have this, do the same thing. Go out of your way to recognize that they have difficulty. Family members, the same thing. They don't want to burden you. You have to help them be part of your life because they are struggling to be part of your life.